誰も覚えていないことは存在しないことになるのだろうか If you're watching this video the date comes out, which is July 31st, 2018, it is the 10 year anniversary of the day Japan saw the release of Fatal Frame Mask of the Lunar Eclipse, the infamous fourth entry in the series which was never officially localized in English. A game that, in my mind, is associated with the series' decline. It was the first title to secure the franchise's status as a Nintendo exclusive one, with each new game being published with a big N, and start a long, upsetting trend of Fatal Frame never getting the spotlight it deserves. I'm sure plenty of people on the internet have a lot of things to say about the whole exclusivity deal, but that doesn't really interest me. I just love playing these games, and as great as it would have been if the series was present on multiple platforms, if I had to buy new systems for it, I'll gladly do so. And I thought today was as good a day as any to commemorate the most obscure and less played entry in the series, cast all of the negativity surrounding its release aside, and explain why it's worth remembering after all. Mask of the Lunar Eclipse was the turning point for the franchise. What started as a more or less supernatural take on Resident Evil with the first game and later developed its own identity with Fate of Frame 2 and 3, somewhat made a full circle and pulled a Resident Evil 4 on us, giving the series a new modern coat of paint. Behind the shoulder camera, more realistic character designs, bigger emphasis on action, all of that served to bring the series into a new generation of gaming, despite it not really changing that much graphically. Fatal Frame 4, for all intents and purposes, marked the beginning of the new chapter in the series' history. For that reason alone, missing out on it and jumping straight to later installments can very easily cause some confusion. In my mind, going from this to this is, if not jarring, then at the very least surprising. If you're not in the know, you might not even realize these games belong to the same series. Mask of the Lunar Eclipse is that missing link between Fate of Frame 3 and 5 that illustrates how the series evolved over the years. It's a very important part of its history. And on top of that, it's also just a really good game. One word that comes to my mind a lot when I think of Fate of Frame 4 is the word unique. Everything about this game is distinct from the rest of the franchise. Its story doesn't follow the established structure that all the other games hold on to. For the first and only time in the series, there was no gateway to hell that needed to be sealed away, there was no sob love story involving the main antagonist, and most shockingly of all, there was no need for any sacrifices. No, no, really, nobody had to die. The whole premise of Mask of the Lunar Eclipse and everything to do with Rogetsu Island is, well, unique. The game is filled with cool concepts like the lunar melody and blooming and masks taking over those who wear them. There's just so much neat stuff in it. Fatal Frame 4 is also incredibly aesthetically pleasing. Everything from the blend of the Western and traditional Japanese styles and the environments, to character and enemy and freaking masks designs, to the way the viewfinder distorts as if the camera is about to blow up in the moment of a Fatal Frame opportunity. All of that is extremely memorable and definitely stands out when you think of the series as a whole. The music, being one of the key themes of the game, is unsurprisingly great as well. The sound design overall is outstanding. All of the bloops and tinkles and noises are vivid and unforgettable. The final boss music is my favorite track in the series. Not to say the game doesn't have any problems, of course. It's full of bugs, some of which are rather serious, you can't complete the ghost list in this one, and also performance issues. Using lenses feels like the game's about to crash. The frame rate takes a dip or two every now and then. The story is universally agreed upon to be difficult to follow, and the lack of official localization doesn't help either. I want Kirishima's flashlight and piss off. <laughs> But. None of that is really all that terrible. I'm sure everyone has their own nitpicks and remarks, but those are the main issues I have with this game. And all things considered, I'd say Mask of the Lunar Eclipse is pretty great. And that's Fatal Frame 4, the cause of much sorrow and anger among the fans of the series. To think that a whole decade has passed already since its release. Doesn't give us much hope for Nintendo to finally listen to our pleas, but who knows? Maybe someone, somewhere within the walls of that company, or Koei Tecmo for that matter, 
will see this occasion as an opportunity to bring it back at one point as an HD remaster or something like that. I'd be so happy. But that's where we're at for the time being. Theater Frame Mask of the Lunar Eclipse. A great game, an important part of the series' history, a Japanese exclusive that very little people have played. The history might have forgotten it, but if there's one thing I know, as long as there's memory of it in the world, it will continue to exist. So I'll remember it. Happy anniversary, Theater Frame 4. <laughs> え、日本の中を彷徨い続けると思っていた昨夜が目覚めた夜に開く花のように静かに大きく咲いた咲いてしまった。あの鴨終わりだ。私は確かめたい。あの時何があったのか、そして失った記憶の先に何があるのか。<